What's going on guys? Unknown player here and today we're back with a bunch more Destiny 2 stuff to talk about and round up. We have even more supposed leaks for Destiny 2's next DLC Black Armory, including some stuff about the Icebreaker exotic, as well as location characters and stuff like that. There's also some new info about Festival of the Lost now it could tie into other characters like Evil Avante, Master of Hall and others as well, as well as a massive summary of lots of other bits and pieces of news that you might have missed, like for example a pretty strange glitch involving an exotic, another sleeper nerf and even more things Bungie have planned. So as usual, usual a lot to talk about today of course if you enjoy the video and want to support this channel you can do so by hitting the like button down below without further ado let's get into it so we do have some new stuff to talk about in regards to the next dlc returning or new exotics and also enemies and locations now this info is a little bit strange but it definitely does have some credibility the user and on the nine who we know is credible on the black armory info actually confirmed this stuff is correct too so i would take it with a tiny pinch of salt like with all leaks of course but that being said what is this one about so according to a user called Jordan Wright film the icebreaker is also returning in addition to the last word and Thunderlord as we know of course and on the line did say that Thunderlord was coming in festival which of course is just next week but now this post says black army so there's a bit of confusion there but icebreaker is definitely a very interesting weapon I think it goes down as probably the most difficult to balance weapons in destiny history of course a sniper that never runs out of ammo so especially crucible wise it caused a lot of problems Bungie of course as always have the dilemma of bringing it back or not I'm sure they want to but they can't of course bring an infinite ammo sniper into crucible and also you can't bring it back with this nerfed version without the signature perk to give infinite ammo i mean i personally would always bet against it considering how much trouble we saw it cause and especially year two and three of destiny one but maybe they found a way to bring it in destiny two that's going to be balanced and fair i guess so some more info from this leaker is actually pretty interesting and may tie in lore wise to some things we've seen before so apparently the mysterious black armory dealer we've seen in this trailer is actually a character called gaunt who is in charge of the actual armory so the reason the name gaunt is interesting is because it is a character we've seen before in Destiny. So back in Destiny 1, there was a fusion rifle called the 7-7 Wizard, and it says the Exo called Gaunt is a famous one for his wizards. So it is pretty interesting stuff. You got a famous gunsmith Exo named Gaunt, and this trailer, of course, does show off a very important Exo gunsmith. So it makes sense for this to be him. It would also be pretty amazing storytelling for Bungie to follow up on this quote from a gun back in 2014. So let me know what you think of this, but it's definitely lining up. Now they also said the Black Armory itself is in the weapons vault, the place in this DLC is actually located in a new part of the EDZ. The story of this DLC involves the Vex, which could make sense because we haven't seen them in quite a while, although never in Destiny history have the Vex been to Earth, so that would be pretty strange as well. The raid layer, according to Anon, is also supposed to be on the European Dead Zone, but I do feel like it would be a bit strange because the European Dead Zone is so massive, it would be weird to have expanded even further. There's supposedly a new black weapon type or category which would make sense thematically, but as you may remember from a recent interview that I covered, Bungie said to Game Informer, if they could create a new weapon class, it would be black. So definitely some interesting stuff and of course let me know what you think of this in the comment section do you believe it do you not and i know a lot of you will be happy to see if icebreaker returns but I want to see what you guys think of this stuff so let's talk about festival of the lost so it's going to be next tuesday on october 16th bungie posted a close-up of these tables that i pointed out in my last video and i did have the theory they may have killed off master ives of course you can see him in one of the holograms of these tables but now bungie is saying there's going to be a murder mystery to solve so it does sound like something's definitely going down and it is just one murder so one person in question bungie did say the event is also going to celebrate multiple lost heroes and you can see three of these shrine tribute table things around so at least three we can see so far some other possible characters could be the speaker although he did die a year ago that hasn't been a festival since his death so it's possibly could be featured in this Cade six is an obvious one of course there's going to be no doubt he'll be featured in this event somehow we do have characters like Eva Levante who is another vendor that mysteriously disappeared at destiny 2 i know a lot of people actually think she died because she isn't in this game but there is actually a scannable tucked away here that says what happened to her she did actually survive the attack on the tower so she lived and made it out but nobody's heard from her in a while so she disappeared somewhere she was also very old that was something bungie made very obvious in her dialogue but maybe she retired or maybe she was murdered maybe it's a mystery who knows it would seem a bit random someone to kill either though now master ives is an interesting one of course he talked about him in my last video and he is the main hologram you can see featured so he is going to be involved in this somehow the only thing in the lore that we know about master ives is that him and master Hall, the tower cryptarch they actually hate each other and never get along so there has always been some friction there between both cryptarchs but in forsaken there is some new dialogue between them and 
that says basically Rahul is asking for help with some research and Ives is not having any of it. It definitely enforces that the two don't like each other, but I'm not sure how likely it is that Rahul would kill Ives over this. Like I said before, I do definitely think that Ives has been killed off somehow and he is the main feature of this kind of murder mystery thing because you can of course see his image in this main hologram thing. Like with all the candles and the kneeling, it looks like he's died, so it definitely seems like a memorial. But also, of course, the main reason is that both Ives and Devrim K have the exact same voice actor and sound identical in the game, so technically Ives can't come back. But either way, shaping up to be a pretty interesting murder mystery, and I guess we'll have to wait and see what it turns out to be, but of course not long until the event launches next Tuesday on the 16th. So next up, let's talk about some updates, changes, and some very strange glitches. So the 1000 voices, of course, is the raid exotic weapon. This is the main drop to get. It is actually a very good weapon in terms of damage. It can compete with the spindle and the wisp on certain encounters. Of course, not as good over time, but it does burst out a lot of damage really quickly. But that is not the only thing it does. There is also a very strange and very weird glitch with this gun in particular, where it can scream and make a very, very loud noise in game. I'm not exactly sure what causes it. It's something to do with firing it in air or moving fast or something like that. But this basically emits the loudest scream you've ever heard in any video game. So I'm going to play for you guys a very short clip of this happening, but I'm going to turn it down by like 50 decibels to make it very quiet. But even still, it's a very loud noise. So again, I turned the volume down on that by a lot, but try to imagine that, but like 50 times loud. It's really hard to imagine just how loud this is. But it's almost like a troll in some ways, because the entire lobby can hear it. So you, your teammates, and the enemy, if you use it in a lobby of Gambit or Crucible, everyone is going to hear this noise. So Bungie have said that the screeching glitch with the thousand voices is going to be fixed in the next update, which is on October 16th. So again, next Tuesday, the same as Festival of the Lost, and it's also going to have a few other things in it as well. You're going to be able to hover over the names of completed lost sectors to make it easier to find them, which is pretty cool. Cool. You can track three pursuits in one, which is nice, and also more weapons in the loot pool, so less edge transits. They're going to be increasing scout rifle damage in PvE because for some reason they stealth nerfed them and their damage right now is awful. So basically, avoid using all scout rifles until this update. Crucible Prime Engrams are actually going to go to your inventory instead of going straight to the Postmaster, and Transmat effects are going to the collection, so you can track any ones you've got since Forsaken. Now, there's also a bigger update coming on October 30th, and this addresses a lot more bigger topics in the community. So, firstly, is the Malfeasance boss the primeval to get the malfeasance exotic this thing is being tweaked as we know so what they're doing is that during the third week of the corruption cycle when it's at its fullest when the shadow throne is live that is when the meatball is going to spawn as often as all the other bosses so every boss is going to have the exact same chance i believe there are five bosses and the meatball would make that six so like 16 percent chance of each of them but either way still going to be quite rare but not as ridiculous as before they're also increasing his spawn rate in the other two curse weeks so not as high as the third but still of course an increase by a lot but because the boss spawns a lot more often the ship and the sparrow are not going to be guaranteed so they're going to be a chance at dropping of course these are needed for the badge which is needed for the dredgen title the sleeper simulant is getting a new nerf so i'm not sure if they're still going to reduce its aim assist like they said before but this is what's going to happen from now the change is that inside gambit only pulling heavy is going to give you two shots instead of four i mean i've been saying from day one that this is how they should nerf sleeper it's so simple and doesn't nerf the weapon unnecessarily in other areas of the game now you've got to think do i want two shots of this sleeper which is very easy to use or should i pick a sniper which gives me a bunch more shots for more kills but of course needs to be more accurate now some other stuff inside here is firstly you're going to be buffing swords fusion rifles and malfeasance in pve which i think is much needed for all those they're going to decrease the chance of getting exotics you already have so of course you're still going to get some duplicates here and there but it should be a lot less than now something i think is pretty cool and definitely much needed is the nightfall loot drop rates are going to increase the more strikes you do without a drop there's also going to be a bunch of masterwork cores inside spider bounties and they're going to make deleting shaders in your inventory a lot faster so a bunch of stuff but again there's going to be more inside the full patch notes now speaking of strike loot i did actually pick up this thing which is the reward for me lake of shadow strike of course this was playstation exclusive for year one so now it's been added it now has a new strike reward that was added in forsaken and this is the reward it's called the militia's birthright and it is a kinetic primary grenade launcher now this weapon like most of the strike loot does actually have complete random rolls but what i got is actually the special curated version so the tier 10 masterwork this is that bungee curated god roll version so this one comes with the flashbang grenade also Genesis and Threat Detector. This, like the Fighting Lion, is a very niche weapon. It's a very particular and kind of weird play style. They're definitely a lot more crucible type weapons, the kind of things you'd use to rip shields off and then switch out to a secondary to finish them off with. But there you go, a very strange piece of strike loot. And again, on the 30th, these drops are going to be a lot more common the more strikes you do without getting something. Now, Bungie did also announce there is not going to be any prestige mode or hard mode or any other difficulty of Last Wish. They said they wanted to focus on making Last Wish an all-in-one raid, which I would say it definitely is. I think 
is a fantastic raid to be honest obviously there was a lot of debate over the difficulty of this raid because as you saw in the first 24 hours only two teams beat it versus 37,000 in previous raids but i would say that this is probably the most that light level or power level has an effect on a raid the second you get over i'd say the 60s 70s this raid becomes really really easy but honestly i love the loot system the encounters the rewards themselves are good i did also get the fate bringer roll the other day as well as a random drop from morgith this if you don't know is basically bungie bringing the fate bringer back through a god roll version on this new raid hand cannon but knowing that the base raid is pretty complete and you've got things like petra's run which requires a completely flawless raid no one can die things like that are going to get you extra rewards like the ribbon spain title i'm pretty fine with there not being a prestige mode but again let me know what you think down below in the comments bungie did also say that this gives them more time to work on the new raid layer we're getting in two months in black armory but that is going to do it for this video as always i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did and want to support this channel then leaving a like rating before you leave would be much appreciated if you are not already then make sure you are subscribed down below and also turn on notifications to be the first to watch my new videos you can find my instagram and twitter link down below in the description and this image will take you to another recent video of mine but as always i appreciate you guys and i'll see you all in the next one